On intermission, a privilege to sit in and uh, tap the historic resources of one Buddy Tate. Welcome in, Buddy. How are you? Oh, fine, Lee. It's so nice to talk to you. Well, I remember when you were appearing at the Celebrity Club on 125th Street. Yeah, it turned out to be a regular gig, a long gig. I was there about 21 years. And before that, if I mention the name Nat Tolls, what does that conjure up? It rings a lot of bells. You know, we were out in uh, Omaha for many, uh, for many moons. I was out there with him. We played all the, all of that territory. You know, out in Minnesota, and we'd go as far as Chicago. Then we go back down south, Texas, Louisiana, women everywhere, but New York. <laughs> well, that Nat Tolls band uh, was, I thought, uh, almost a. a uh, uh, a chip off the Jimmy Lunsford uh, Yeah, really. Style. Uh, he admired Jimmy quite a bit, and the writers, most of the writers did too, you know. It was a good band. It was unfortunate we never recorded, but a very good band. One time we had Charlie Christian with us, you know, the great guitarist. Yes. And we had some good guys, to Charles Thompson and to Henry Coker and Fred Beckett. Uh, he didn't live too long, but he was a great trombonist. Yeah, I don't know if you remember him or not. He did some things with Harlan Leonard. Yes, out of Kansas City. Yeah, I think you remember all our bridges and things like that he did. Great trombone player. Well, it was a band that uh, grew a lot of stars uh, and great soloists, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It had. Uh, it was really a good band. You know, we had plenty of work, too. We had an agent that only booked uh, Lawrence Welk and our band. And uh, Lawrence Welk played the polkas, and we tried to play the jazz. Well, he certainly uh, ended up with an empire, didn't he? Speaking he of Lawrence did. Welk. I saw him once. I was out. Well, I saw him a couple of times, you know, in later years. I was out on the coast with Goodman, and uh, he came to see me. And I felt awful good. And, uh, you know, we, re we reviewed the books, and we were talked about the Minnesota days and North Dakota days, and it was a real pleasure. Well, I, I know you must have known of... Uh, of the Pettiford family here. Oh, sure did, yeah. I knew them all. I knew, uh, well, I knew Harry before I knew any of them. He was a good tenor player, you know. He was a, I think he's still around in Oakland. In, uh, I think he's in Tulsa. But I knew them very well. Yes, they were quite a family. Yeah. Prez was out here, too, for a long time, Lester. Yes, he was. And uh, certainly uh, you sitting for nine years in that Basie band, Pork Pie Hat was very close to you, wasn't he? Yeah, Prez was uh, uh, very good. You know, he's the one that met me when I met the band in Kansas City. And uh, he was always there, you know. And when we got to New York, we did a little short tour before we got to New York. And when we got to Pennsylvania Station, I didn't know where to go. You know, I'm standing there. I know I must have looked terrible standing in the station. Everybody jumped in taxis and gone. And I looked over in the corner, and he was over there beckoning for me to... That he had me. He took you <laughs> under his wing. Yeah, and he carried me onto the woodside. That was uh, that was our hangout. You know, that's why we made the uh, jumping at the woodside. You know, that was in Woodside, Long Island, the Woodside Hotel. Woodside, yes, the Woodside Hotel, but it was on Seventh Avenue in New York. And that's uh, where it really was located, wasn't it? Yeah, near the Savoy Ballroom, about a block and a half from Savoy. Man, I was so excited when I got there. Savoy was jumping, and they had hostess up there, then. it was really nice, you know. So much things, were, so many things were happening in New York City. You remember? Well, I remember. That's where we met, you remember? I do, at um, a place called the Palm Cafe. That's where you were, and it's Palm Cafe. Whatever came to Ro uh, uh, Evelyn, you remember the Ray Sugar Ray's uh, sister? Uh, Evelyn Robinson. I have yeah. lost track. Um, I uh, did, you know, I just, I thought about it, because she was in there, too, wasn't she? Yes, she was. She was uh, one of the main communicators and spokespersons on the program. Uh-huh. Yeah. Along with Diane Carroll. That's right. Sure, yeah. sure was. And Diane Johnson at that time. Uh-huh. She was going to the High School of Performing Arts. Uh-huh. Well, Buddy, um, when you first joined, uh, you were describing that, uh, that event where you met uh, Lester Young and he took you under the wing, and then you spent nine years with Basie. And how, how about that initiation getting... Uh, getting into the band well uh yeah when uh, when i met the band in kansas city they had a, uh, a boy that they brought out from new york you know so uh i listened to the band that night and uh, he would play like the first part half and uh, then i would play the you know the second part after the intermission so uh 
well, I had worked with Bass's first band, but they hadn't heard me play for some time, you know. And uh, we played at KU University that night. I don't know how many thousands of people. So the band was showering down. So when I'm trying to make up my mind. I said, maybe I better go on back out with Nat Toes. Well, I you already made it, you know what I mean? They sounded great. But everybody kept asking for blue and sentimental. Some people knew that Herschel had passed, and some didn't. You were speaking of Herschel Evans. Of Herschel Evans, uh-huh. Yes. And uh, basses would say, we can't. We can't play it. And uh, they would to shout out on something else and bring the house down. But it always would be a few people that continued to ask for, for uh, Blue and Sentimental. So when basses says, hey, bud, I'm sitting back on the bandstand with my horn. I hadn't even, hadn't even took it out of the case. So he says, hey, bud, you remember that? I says, I heard it. <laughs> it wasn't any music to it, you know. It was sort of like a head arrangement. He says, come on down. It felt like my, it felt like my last walk. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I was scared to death. So he made the intro, and we went into it, but everything was just laid just so great, and it was so beautiful, and I think everybody in the place stood up and whistled and and everybody in the band stood up and said, he's the one. Don't look any farther. <laughs> I'll never forget that, you know. And Prez looked behind and reached around uh, Earl Warren. And Jack Washington, we only had four saxophones. And winked his eye and did a little quirl and says, you in. That's what it meant, you know. <laughs> oh, that's a great story, buddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Boy, that was something. That was a terrible feeling, though. Oh, well, do you <laughs> still get those feelings at all? Yeah, well, uh. I don't know then. It looked like, you know, I didn't know how it was going to be because I hadn't practiced it, you know, in anything. And uh, yeah, the horn was still, I figured it was going to be dry and wet and everything. But it, everything was just, just just one of those things that happened, you know. And that, that was it. In those nine years with Count Basie, how would you sum that up, buddy? Well, it was ten. Ten? Uh-huh. I, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, well, it was... Beautiful, you know, it was really beautiful to be with the band because I think everybody wanted to play with that band because it swung so, you know, and it was loose. And Basie always wanted, he used to tell us, he says, I don't want the band to feel like we read music. He says, I just want it to be loose and just like it would be five pieces, you know. And that's the kind of feeling he tried to get. So we, we weren't ever under any pressure. And he was a great guy to work for. He was just like, one of the boys in the in the band, you know, just another uh, member of the band. But we everybody respected him, you know, as a leader. And all he wanted you to do when you hit that bandstand, he wanted you to play. He'd hang out with you all night. And if you don't think because you got high and to, couldn't perform the next night that he was going to excuse you because he wouldn't. He figured, and I don't think it was too much to ask for because that's what it was all about. And uh, it was just beautiful, you know, having been there with all the great players. Buddy Tate, a pleasure to hear you review some of those days with Count Pacey. And oh, your, thank you. Your initial beginning with the band, and also, too, to think about the great territory that Nat Tolls and his uh, great um, touring band uh, covered and your experience with that organization. So it was beautiful days. Beautiful. And they are now with you on stand. Oh yeah, I and I'm you know I'm enjoying it, and I had a beautiful time with my band too, Lay. I, I enjoyed that the Celebrity Club band. It was really like a family band, you know, as just about everybody's passed on. But it was really a good band for many beautiful days, you know, like when we, you and I, were in New York together and all like that. Yeah, but. Uh, it's still good to be around, hanging around. You know? Oh, you're more than doing that. <laughs> well, buddy, uh, I know there are people waiting to hear you on stage at the Artist Quarter through Sunday night, and thank you for taking time out to visit with us. It's been a ball, and thanks for the invite. I hope to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow night on stand. Okay, and I'll look for you, and thank you again once. Thank you, buddy Tate. All right now.